Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. In Hollywood, executive turnover is constant. The entertainment industry is extremely fickle. High-level producers and even chairmen and presidents often get shuffled in and out about as often as EA puts out the same Madden game. Oh, Madden. But since the release of Iron Man in 2008, Kevin Feige has been the guy steering the ship creatively at Marvel Studios. Through the thick and thin of the Disney buyout, the different phases, and all the reported tension with former Marvel CEO Mike Perlmutter, Feige has always been there, making his mark on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The kind of steady hand on the tiller that DC usually feels like it lacks. And no matter what you think of the MCU as a whole, it's impossible to deny that it's been a massive success at the box office. For well over a decade now, Feige's Marvel has been what other big studios are trying to emulate, from Universal's Dark Universe to the aborted attempt at trying to establish a King Arthur cinematic universe. But lately, well I think it's fair to ask if a change in leadership is what the MCU needs. If, after all these years, Feige's perceived Midas touch might be fading. Director of the Candyman reboot, Nia DaCosta, recently spoke about her experience directing the Marvels, saying, It is a Kevin Feige production. It's his movie. So, I think you live in that reality, but I tried to go in with the knowledge that some of you is going to take a back seat. Now, DaCosta isn't saying anything people didn't already assume from most MCU productions, but it is rare to see a director acknowledge it so bluntly. And though it may be too soon to judge the Marvels, I think it's worth asking if this is still the best way to create a line of disparate superhero movies. Now, the MCU has benefited a lot from Feige's coherent vision of what he wants this universe to be. For years, the MCU formula and feel have provided a baseline of competence from which directors have often either met or built upon and exceeded, as James Gunn managed to do in his Guardians films. But are some radical changes needed in a post-Endgame world? When I talk to people about the Marvel movies and TV shows these days, I feel like I keep hearing the same thing, from both people who are really invested in superhero movies and comics and those who aren't. It's just gotten boring because they kind of all feel the same. And I know some would say that's just an inevitability of the genre. After all these MCU projects, how could any of them hope to feel fresh? And while that may seem reasonable on the surface, the more I think about the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the more I disagree. Because the fact is, they haven't done all that much to try new tones and styles within it. Sure, on the surface, you can say things like, well, Captain America Winter Soldier is aiming to be a paranoid 70s political thriller, while She-Hulk is trying to be a more light sitcom-like dramedy. And that could make it sound like the MCU contains a lot of variants, but I think we all know that that's just not how it feels in practice. MCU projects tend to have a fairly similar sense of humor. Most are shot with a very effects-heavy, not particularly adventurous sense of cinematic style. Which, to be honest, in my opinion, has gotten worse looking since the volume became part of Disney productions. Plus, they tend to lean on underpaid VFX workers for anything visually interesting and feature post credit scenes which at this point often feel like rote obligations more than anything the filmmakers were actually excited about teasing. This all sounds very negative, I know, but by and large, I think Phase 4 and the start of Phase 5 has completely deserved it. But there was a point in time where that MCU style of dialogue felt punchier and fun, and where the teases for the next movies actually felt exciting. Now the MCU as a whole kind of feels out of gas. Maybe it's unfair to pin all of that on Feige, but he gets a lot of credit for the MCU's successes, so it only feels right that he should have to shoulder a lot of the blame too. If, as DaCosta said, the MCU is his vision, I think it's probably time to admit that that vision is kind of tapped out. It's clear that there's a tone that Feige prefers, which often involves comedically undercutting anything that could be perceived as too sincere or too silly. And when I look at the history of Marvel Comics, it just offers so much more than that. That's not to say that this style hasn't yielded any good results. It has, and I've found a lot to enjoy in the MCU over the years. But it isn't all Marvel could be. When you look at the earnest epics of Walt Simonson's Thor, 
the grimy boldness of Garth Ennis' Punisher Max, or all the strange and audacious things that the X-Men comics have done through the years, I honestly feel like the MCU hasn't come close to tapping into all the shades of tone and story that these comics have to offer. But maybe those aren't the type of stories that Feige wants to tell. And you know what, when it was working and his vision for the MCU felt fresh and exciting, that was okay. But it's been a very long time now, and I don't think there's any shame in admitting that after well over a decade, Feige's tastes and instincts may no longer be what audiences are looking for. I remember how exciting and different Iron Man felt in the superhero movie landscape of 2008, and how unique building up to that team-up movie in The Avengers was in 2012, but that's just not the case anymore, especially after Avengers Endgame gave a lot of more casual fans a very fitting and convenient off-ramp for Feige's MCU. I actually think if he had stepped back after its release, that would have made a lot more sense creatively. Now, it feels like him and his specific sensibility for these stories may have outstayed their welcome. Now, I understand that losing Kevin Feige would be a significant risk for the MCU. Having that steady hand there has definitely led to a lot of their success. But at what point is sticking with his vision as it continues to diminish just not worth it anymore? If you look at the source material, this cycle isn't actually all that unusual in the history of comics. Using an example from what Stanley would have called the Distinguished Competition, the Silver Age of comics lasted from the mid-50s to early 70s, and you saw some comics like Batman and Detective Comics desperately in need of a new style at the end of it, after their audience had grown tired of the same old thing and was demanding a massive shift in tone. Leading to Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams' take on Batman, which refreshed the way these stories looked and were told, and for a time, really revitalized the character. I actually just watched a really amazing video on the Bronze Age of Batman from the channel Salazar Knight if you're interested in that story, I'd definitely recommend it. But the point here is pretty simple. Tastes change. While the core characters and world may still be appealing, you can't expect to tell the same kind of stories in the same kind of way for so long and expect the success of 2019 to just come back again. I'm not sure if Kevin Feige can make those kind of adjustments and allow for MCU movies that feel radically different from what we've seen before. And if he can't, I think it might just be time for Marvel to move on. At a time where it feels like the MCU is floundering, desperately searching for a fresh direction that connects with audiences again, it could be time to move on from Feige's preferred style and push these films into a new frontier. Talking about big Hollywood productions is nice and all, but if you're interested in making something for yourself, I highly recommend Marquez Brownlee's YouTube success, Script, Shoot, and Edit on Skillshare. As I've said, Brownlee is the perfect YouTube mentor. I rewatch this one a lot just because it's really concise and well done. And it pairs extremely well with creative breakthroughs, eight exercises to power your creativity, confidence, and career. A great class that really helps you harness your own creativity. Everyone has a different goal in mind when they join Skillshare, and none of them are too small. Whether you want to take a class on improving your productivity, tackle imposter syndrome, or learn to code in Python, Skillshare is going to be there to have your back. So go to that link in the description or pinned comment down below, and the first thousand people to use it will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.